We are live in Studio B with a room full of dudes, the Revivalists from New Orleans, Louisiana. Welcome. We're glad you guys are here. Thanks for having us. Who can introduce me to everyone who's in this room this afternoon? I guess that would be me. Uh, my name is Rob, and I play the saxophone and do a little bit of the, uh, the backing harmony vocals you heard there. Directly clockwise to me, because we're standing in a circle, is uh, our dear friend Zach Feinberg on the guitar. And then clockwise of him would be David Shaw on the vocals and a little also guitar. Then we got George Geekus on the bass. Just did a lovely curtsy. You guys can't see that. And then uh, Ed Williams on the pedal steel guitar, which, yes, is a real instrument. (laughs) Sorry, buddy. Uh, Andrew Campanelli on the drums. And then Michael Gerardo to my direct counterclockwise on the keyboards. And you might hear him on a bit of trumpet today as well. So, yeah, you guys definitely have all the musical food groups represented in here this <laughs> afternoon. And, and it does seem like a lot of what the press is saying about you is that you're combining the, the funk genre as well as the indie rock genre. Was that something you set out to do intentionally when you started this band? Maybe a little bit. It's just kind of an unintentional thing. We just we all like a lot of different kinds of music, and whatever we like is gets combined into how we play with each other and what we write. So... So talk a little bit about the band's history and how it came together. I was riding my bicycle uh, down the streets of New Orleans one summer day in 2007, and there was this shirtless, tattooed fellow uh, singing this great song on his porch. It turned out to be our lead singer, David. And, uh, you know, we struck up a conversation and started showing each other stuff on the guitar, and we, we started the band soon after. So have you always been a seven-piece? No. Um, we gradually... <laughs> added everybody, but we've been playing with uh, the core of this band for about three years, maybe four years now, and um, we recently added, Mike's been sitting in with us on trumpet and keys for about three years, but he's been touring with us regularly for a year and a half, two years. It seems like, too, that the famed and fabled music club Tipitina's had a little bit to do with y'all's origin story, and uh, they do some music workshops there, it sounds like. Can you talk about those? Yes, I met drummer Andrew Campanelli. Uh, at those workshops when we were both students in college um, and we started jamming with each other in about 2006. So when David and I started playing these like acoustic stuff and he, he was all about getting a band together, I was like, well, I'll call my friend Andrew Campanelli. And that's what, and he didn't pick up for a long time and I left him an angry message at one point. What did I say in the message? Cam? He told me not to Pete best myself. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> There's some implications in that. I, I, I think I called him back 15 minutes later and was like, uh, yeah, let's jam. Okay, yeah. yeah. Now, that we're no, now that we know things are serious. As far as those New Orleans influences go, uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the nurturing, the, the music scene that, that you get from that? That we can. Uh, I'd say we, uh, we're probably, on average, I'd say about seven or eight years people have been in the city. and It's, uh, it's, it's a really interesting scene there because like, there are so many... There's so many good musicians, and you'd think it would be oversaturated and really cutthroat because everybody's fighting for gigs. But for some reason, it's just something about the culture. It's more everybody's trying to uplift each other. And so, I mean, you see all these people who are way better than you, and it kind of inspires you to play better. And at the same time, they're not they're usually not like talking down to you or thinking, oh, yeah, I can, I can take this kid. It's more about, oh, what you got? Let's see, let's see how you can grow. And it's, uh, And, you know, there's also a sort of kind of greasiness maybe you could say that sort of gets under your skin when you live there for a while and now when you say greasiness kinda, is this in a good way uh, or yeah 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 it's uh <laughs> there's a certain like a little dirty and swagger and also yeah it's very humid down there so a, a literal greasiness <laughs> as opposed De- to a metaphorical yeah definitely well well that town has, has definitely been famed for a long time for breeding some pretty famous musicians but yeah. well you guys you guys have have made some strides in a short period of time uh noticed you got invited to be a guest at warren haynes pre-christmas jam how how was that it was really really fun we, that was <laughs> yeah. our first time in Asheville, um and 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 we loved it that was it was just a great experience it was kind of like I, I was I was calling it it was like summer camp for for a band guy or winter camp I guess it's just like the whole atmosphere is really positive and just it was fun and, and you know warren has um uh well a, a new a native new orleanian and a, a new new orleanian in his band nigel hall and terrence higgins and and trombone shorty was there and anders was there so it was really there was a lot of our new orleans 
spoke at the uh, at the jam. So it was really fun for us to kind of. It's always fun to run into those guys and uh, that you know from around town and see them out of town and get to hang with them. And especially when it's like two days, it was Definitely. pretty awesome. And we we really were we really appreciated being asked to be a part of that. It was really fun. It, it seems like 2012 was pretty good to y'all, and uh, it it that you know you're just going to kind of build on that. Uh, I notice that you're going to South by Southwest. Is this your first trip down for that? Uh, it's our first time officially playing uh, uh, the festival. We've played, you know, as many bands have uh, in Austin during that week and played showcases, and we've been there and felt the excitement before. But this this will be a little different because it's going to be our first official South by showcase. And, uh, so talk a little bit about your record. The most recent one, Vital Signs? Uh, the most recent one, City of Sound. Okay, did you guys release those close together on the, the spectrum of things? Um, well, we recorded them a lot closer together than we released them. Okay. Um, but, yeah, Vital Signs, I think, came out in 2000... March 2010 was Vital Signs. 10? Sign. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then City yeah. of Sound was March 2012. City of Sound was, was not we until 2012, but we recorded City of Sound. We actually tracked most of it in still in 2010 um so yeah um sorry what was the question <laughs> <laughs> well as far as the making of the two and um yeah yeah those were those talk were really different records to sound. make what'd you say talk, just talk about making city of sound all right city of sound yeah well they were they were really different records to make but real briefly vital signs was uh our first full-length trip into the studio and and it was really cool, and, and we had uh, Chris Finney produce it, and he kind of guided us along in, term, in, in the art of making your first record. And then when it came time to do the second record, we, we'd been listening to a lot of the stuff that Ben Elman was producing, with a lot of the galactic stuff um, and the trombone shorty stuff, uh, and, and we really liked his production techniques and, and his style. So we called him originally to just do a few tracks, um, and we ended up deciding like a week before we just decided to track a whole record. Um, and so we did that and then Ben, Ben did the whole record with us. So, so it was really, it was, that was a totally different experience. Um, then, then Vital Signs, it was really cool to kind of like let go a little more and, and kind of give him a little more creative control. It's it's kind of when you do your first record it's pretty normal I think to control every little detail and that's what that's what we tried to do. Yeah, it yeah. would seem daunting too to to hand the reins over to someone else. Um, but yeah, I guess also a necessary part of the growth as well. Yeah, we're talking today with the Revivalists. They have got a show coming up this evening at the Great Eagle Tavern and Music Hall in the River Arts District in downtown Asheville. I want to let you know that live studio B sessions on WNCW are made possible by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. Thank you guys so much for being here this afternoon. Thank you, Thank you for having us. My name is Laura Blackley. We're going to get to This Is How Psychic I Am, fellas, some trombone shorty to take me back up the hall. Thanks for tuning in.